Okay, welcome everyone uh, to our ladies' room, and this is our fifth event. Uh, we are going to talk why <laughs> I hate summertime, coordinating a global community of learners. So this talk is recorded and will be posted on YouTube. Feel free to turn off your cameras uh, if you don't want to be recorded. Please make sure to keep your microphones on off during the talk. Consider any pop-ups out the video that are not related to the talk to be excluded from your machine during the talk and then you can uh, you feel free to use the chat or ask questions or raise your hand. Uh, all of our at MB are committed to follow a code of conduct so I mentioned this in particular with care because uh, last uh, last event uh, we had uh, unpleasant uh, outcomes so uh, I beg you to uh, follow this code of conduct that you find on ourladies.org code of conduct thank you so material for tonight tonight is watch and learn so uh, John will share uh, his presentation to us and again good evening everyone and welcome to the fifth event hosted by our ladies room chapter my name is federica gazzelloni i am one of the chapters organizers i'm thrilled to have you all here tonight and i'm also joined by our co-organizer katie jane wood who is an expert marketing professional and recently joined our team hi katie hello everybody it's great to be here i'm very excited and curious to, to learn about uh, John's talk this evening, or this morning for you guys. <laughs> um, okay, I say this in, uh, in Italian. Benvenuti, questo è il quinto evento per il gruppo Our Ladies Room. Eh, io sono Federica Gazzelloni, una delle organizzatrici. Con me c'è Katie Jane Wood, l'altra co-organizer, professionista del marketing in diversi settori, incluso farmaceutico. E questa sera avremo John Harmon, il nostro ospite, che ci parlerà della sua esperienza con R4DS, eh, un open learning community e eh, molto di più eh, su tutte le sfide diciamo, che, che sono in, questo, eh, in queste nuove avventure. Tutto il materiale verrà condiviso durante la, la, la presentazione, quindi avete, potete dare anche un'occhiata al sito r4datasci.com. What is Our Ladies? Our Ladies is a, a global organization with the mission of promoting our language for empowering women at all user levels by building a collaborative global network. It is a gender diversity friendly community founded in 2012 by Gabriela de Queros in San Francisco and since then uh, is now a worldwide organization with 218 chapters, 29 countries, and more than 93,000 members globally. So you can visit ourladies.org for more information. Our Ladies Rome is a local chapter of Our Ladies Global, and uh, it is dedicated to promoting gender diversity in the art language community, and we usually do monthly meetings to provide a platform to discuss current trends and uh, hot topics in R, and we encourage active participation and engagement from all attendees. We welcome your suggestions and comments and invite you to get in touch to join our vibrant community. So the founder of the chapter is Claudia Vitolo, which is, um, she is also the co-founder of Our Ladies Global, I am Federica Gazzelloni and we have our co-organizer Katie Jane Wood, but we expect more co-organizers to join us soon. So far our schedule uh, has been quite um, busy uh, and so we are here. Uh, we had very interesting talks and tonight we have John Armon. We expect two events for June next month. So one on the 12th and, and the other one on the 30th. Uh, both are ve the scientists, uh, very important women that will inspire us, uh, telling us about very important things. Uh, Simina Boga will talk to us about data science uh, and as a career. And uh, Dr. Laura Khan 
will talk us about a uh, latest book about uh, the politics of coronaviruses. And so then in July we have a, um, our kickstart, so we, need, we are going to set up um, a brief course for kicking you started with R. Thank you very much. Latest things ever is the uh, new Art Ladies Rome website. So it is a chapter website, you can find a little information and you have uh, um, um, some blog posts and uh, all the talks that we post on our channel on YouTube. So welcome to this exciting event, it's my pleasure to pass the word to our speaker for tonight's event. He is a highly respected expert in the field and has been a leader in the art community for many years. As the chief community manager of r 4 ds Online Learning Community, he has mentored and coordinated a diverse group of art learners, helping them to improve their skills and abilities. He is here to today to share his valuable insights and practical trip tips on managing time zones and scheduling events for a global audience. Please join me in welcoming our speaker, John Armon. Thank you very much, Federica. Um, let me share my screen. All right, so as uh, Federica mentioned, um, I'm John Harmon. I run the r ds online learning community. Um, we're a global community. We have a about a little over 15,000 members right now, I think. Um, and uh, we're, you can find us, um, and we're going to be posting these in the chat uh, occasionally, I think, but r4ds.io slash join to join our Slack. Um, and then also you can see on my slides here, hopefully, um, r4ds.io slash Our Ladies Rome 2023-05 are these slides. Um, this is a Quarto uh, multiplex presentation, so if you load it up uh, on your computer, it should advance the slides as I go through. So if you can't see my version, um, you can load a local version and follow along that way. Um, so today I am going to recruit you into my war against summertime, also known as daylight savings time, um, and hopefully help you think a little bit more carefully about uh, how do you can deal with times and dates. So first, I want to talk a little bit about uh, time around the world. Um, you know, you probably know that you know there are different time zones in different places around the world. Uh, this is an image from one of my favorite sites for sorting out time uh, things, timeanddate.com, um, and that's just showing the the time zones. And you know, you can see they're not you know in theory they might be just nice uh, straight up and down lines. They're not, um, and there's lots of complications. So, the first like type of compl complicate or first thing I want to talk about is time changes. Like that's the main reason that I'm talking about this today. Uh, just in 2023, so far, there have been eight planned changes that did not happen. Now these changes are in some of the online databases of times. Um, if you have uh, at least certain versions of the uh, TZDB package, you might think that you're doing great, that you're, you've got everything correct for different places, but these didn't happen. That one in January, that was Fiji. They were going to be doing their um, fallback and they abolished daylight savings before that happened. So that, that change never happened, except actually this, um, coming fall, which is their spring, they're reinstating daylight savings. And so there's another one that might may or may not be in the databases that will be happening. Uh, February, that was Jordan. They about abolished daylight savings. Iran abolished daylight savings. That was going to be the 21st. The 25th would have been uh, Palestine. They abolished daylight savings. And uh, it originally would have been Lebanon. We'll talk about them a little bit more. Uh, the 30th of March, that was Syria. They abolished daylight savings. The 2nd of April, that's uh, Mexico. They abolished, um, but we're going to talk a little bit more about them as well. And then the April 20th, uh, that is where at somewhat 
somewhat last minute, Lebanon, uh, Lebanon decide to delay the uh, beginning of daylight savings until April 20th. Um, so they announced that uh, right very close to the 25th, and, but then some didn't change on the 25th and it was chaos for uh, a while until we'll talk about the ones that actually did happen because then they had to change the date that they decided to spring forward. And again, they did this somewhat last minute. And so different databases say that they changed on the 25th, or they might say that they changed on the 20th. They might say that they changed uh, on uh, the date that was it, March 30th. But they also like, none of those are correct because you need to know the individual date that's being recorded, who recorded it and what time zone were they actually using? So uh, that's fun. So speaking of those though, the ones that actually happened, um, there have been 20 changes, 20 points in time when change, dates have changed or times have changed so far this year. Um, that those ones on March 12th, that's the most of the United States and Canada. Um, it includes Newfoundland, which is the half hour time zone there, which is also, those are always fun. Um, I've used the term a few times, uh, but I know that we have an international audience here in, in the US and uh, some other places, we call it spring forward in the spring when we, when we go into daylight savings. So it's like we're jumping forward, the clocks move forward. Uh, and then in the autumn, when uh, we go back to standard time, we call that fall back. So I'll I'll say those uh, occasionally through here. That just means spring forward is when you set the clock forward for some uh, summertime or daylight saving time. Fall back is when you go back to standard time, uh, roughly. Um, so yeah, March 12th, that's the United States and Canada, uh, except it's not most of Arizona, the state of Arizona. It's not the state of Hawaii. Um, in Canada, it's not the Yukon Territory. Most of British Columbia doesn't observe daylight savings. Uh, most of Saskatchewan doesn't. Um, Southampton Island up in Hudson Bay doesn't observe daylight savings time. And parts of uh, Eastern Quebec uh, do not observe daylight savings time, particularly the uh, French speaking or the most solidly French speaking portions of Quebec. Um, However, some northern Mexico border towns, even though Mexico doesn't observe daylight savings town time, they do observe daylight savings time because they want to stay in sync with the uh, cities right across the border from them in the United States. And so, uh, again, it's it's chaos. But some of them changed on that day, and some did not. Um, let's see, March nineteenth. This is Morocco. They actually fall back for Ramadan. And then down there on the 30th uh, of April, they spring back forward. So for just a little bit over a month, their time zone changes. And then another one that happened, may have happened on March 19th is Troll Station in Antarctica. I uh, Online sources say either March 19th or March 26th. I haven't actually spoken to anyone from Troll Station, so I don't know which one they actually observe, but they actually, uh, spring forward by two hours and then fall back to uh, their standard time is actually the same as Norway because it's a Norwegian station. And so, um, yeah, and they actually spring forward in Northern Hemisphere spring, even though it's uh, winter in the, uh, or you know, it's autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so, all right, uh, March 24th, that's Israel. That's when they spring forward. But again, Palestine does not. Uh, March 26th, Europe and Greenland spring forward. Um, March 30th, again, that's when Lebanon actually officially did spring forward, but it had happened at various places in the small country before then. And then we have uh, the first and second of April. That's the um, South America, the Southern Hemisphere, rather. Uh, that's when they fall back. And so in Australia, New Zealand, and parts of Antarctica, um, and as well, then on the second, it's Chile, uh, they go back from daylight savings time. But the parts of Antarctica, I just want to point that out, that Antarctica at its peak has a total population of under 5,000 people. But between those 5,000 people, 
there are at least three different days on which their clocks change, three different times rather. Um, and so if you are working in Antarctica and you're trying to communicate with a base that might be just like, you know, not that far away from you, they might be on a completely different time zone because everyone is set based on uh, which country like uh, runs that station. And then again, that final one is it's Morocco. So like, why does that matter? There are three main uh, categories of issues that I want to talk to you about today and kind of how you can deal with them. So the first one is um, due dates. So, you know, I need this by 5 p.m. next Thursday. Um, depending on where you are, 5 p.m., you know, might be different today than it is next Thursday. And so knowing what that's what that actually means is important. Uh, and I say recurring meetings, but really any meetings, um, but especially recurring meetings. Let's meet every Wednesday at 1 p.m. Well, this week, Wednesday at 1 p.m. might be different than next week, Wednesday at 1 p.m., depending on where you are and who you're talking to. And then the one that's probably most important for um, data scientists is historical data. Does this signal correlate with that result? So something might say it happened, you know, at the exact minute and second as some other event, and you think, oh, great, that's a, you know, that's a strong correlation. And then you look into it and you realize that they didn't actually happen at the same time. It's just an anomaly of how they were recorded. And so um, that can be really difficult to deal with. And I want to give you some tips for things to watch out for. All right, so we're going to start with due dates. Um, due dates uh, are very, very special to my heart. I used to run uh, student support for an online homework uh, startup. And many of our early users were in the state of Arizona. Um, if you're from outside the US, you might not be familiar with Arizona. It's most famous probably for the Grand Canyon. Um, there are 22 American Indian nations in Arizona. And uh, famous to me, they don't observe daylight savings time mostly, and I will get into what I mean by mostly in a moment. And so when the rest of the United States or most of the rest of the United States change times and Arizona did not, uh, I would always get just a flood of emails every year, both at spring forward and at fall back of students saying, hey, I went to do my homework and it said it was already due, it, the date had passed. Um, and the reason for that is these students would either set their time zone as uh, mountain time, which is where Arizona mostly is, or they'd set it as Pacific time, which is what Arizona is the same as during the summer. Um, but Arizona is not either of those time zones. It is its own time zone. Uh, and it depends where you are in Arizona, actually. Um, eventually, we added a widget to the screen that would look at what the user had set as their time zone, what they had set on their computer as their time zone, and what their university had as like its master time zone. And it would let them know if any of those didn't match up with one another, that in that case, you know, we'd say, hey, your time zone's probably wrong, but we couldn't just fix it. Because I say probably wrong, um, because, like I mentioned, Arizona has 22 Native American or American Indian nations. And up there at the Northeast is the Navajo Nation, which spans four states. Uh, it's in Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. And they want the entire Navajo Nation to be on the same time zone. So they do observe daylight savings so that they can match with the rest of the nation. But if you look inside of the Navajo Nation, there's a section of it that's the Hopi Nation, and the Hopi Nation does not observe daylight savings time. But if you look inside of the Hopi Nation, there's a section of it that is another piece of the Navajo Nation, and that piece of the Navajo Nation does observe daylight savings time. And so, like, if you start on the eastern border of Arizona and drive west, uh, you can change time zones, um, I think it's six times as you just go through, you're going back and forth between you know, uh, five hours behind day, uh, 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 in Greenwich Mean Time and uh, six hours, right? Six and seven, I think it is. 
Um, so yeah, that, that was always fun that, you know, we might have a student who technically they're go attending a university in, uh, you know, maybe in Phoenix, but they actually live up in the Northeast corner. And so their clock doesn't match their university's time zone. And so that was always fun to deal with that. And then as an aside on this, uh, we would also always have professors who uh, were very upset that students could change their time zone. It would change when things were due. And we had to you know, explain to them that, no, it just changes when we tell them things are due, but they're always actually due at the same moment in time, um, wherever that is actually saved. And so it's all uh, complicated. And that leads to some tips. So the first thing is that you want to always save everything normalized. And probably you want to normalize that to UTC, Coordinated Universal Time. Um, you might get away with uh, saving it in just whatever your local time zone is if you are only dealing in that one time zone because you can have, you know, you can introduce mistakes if you're going back and forth all the time. But I would say it's probably worth working through those things and still saving in UTC because in the future, UTC is always UTC, but time zones can change. Um, we've had a couple of times in the last 20 years or so that the US has changed what the rules are for when daylight savings happens. Um, or for example, uh, Lebanon this year, um, if you were saving things in your local time, no one 10 years from now will know what you thought local time was at, on certain days this year. And so that would just be confusing versus if you save it in UTC, uh, everyone knows what that is or everyone can find, figure out what that is. Uh, another tip when you're dealing with due dates, if you have some sort of automated system, if you can also give the time as what I'm calling a distance. So instead of just saying it's gonna be, uh, you know, Friday at uh, 1.30 p.m. Say it's gonna be in two days and three hours. And so they might think Friday at 1.30 p.m. is something different than what you think it is, uh, but they might, uh, hopefully they'll go, wait, two days and three hours, that would be 2.30 p.m. by what I'm thinking, or, or it'd be uh, 8.30 or it'd be whatever uh, time they're thinking in. So if you do both, it can help surface that, hey, we are not agreeing on what time zones mean here. Um, and then another thing to do is if you can, just check in with users. Like, uh, you know, again, that we, the ones that we knew were in Arizona, uh, attending a university in Arizona, we would point out to them, hey, are you sure you have your time zone set right? Because uh, some of you are changing, some of you are not, and something weird is happening here. And so, just checking in with users or coworkers or whoever it might be uh, to make sure that you all understand what each other's time zones are can be very useful. All right, so the next category is recording rec yeah, recurring meetings. And again, like I said, this can apply even just to a single, single meeting. Um, this is the one that actually like caused this uh, to be on my mind when I was deciding what I was going to speak about. Uh, because at R4DS, we have book clubs. Uh, we currently have 22 clubs for 21 different books. Um, and we have a spreadsheet of 46 books that have been approved to have book clubs. Uh, some of them have happened in the past. Some of them are yet to happen. Um, I think Federica has been in about 40 of those clubs something like that. Um, all the books that we read for the clubs are available free online. And then we meet one hour a week to discuss a chapter or a piece of a chapter or, or um, maybe two or three chapters. Um, but it's the same time, theoretically, uh, and the same day every week for a given cohort of the club. The times are chosen with a shiny app that I created with uh, Priyanka Gugnaja to um, let everyone, you know, everyone can tell us, hey, this is when I want to meet in my time zone. And then we coordinate all of that. We convert it to UTC and we figure out what are the times that work for everybody. But the times get messy around daylight saving switches. So this is the schedule for 
uh, our current Advanced R book club. Uh, those red highlights that um, are indicated, it's they say skip for daylight savings madness. And that was back in October and then uh, in March again. The We used to try to work around things, but clubs would just run into one another because we have different clubs meeting. And if you if the club is mostly people in the US, they we spring forward. Um, let's see, I think we spring forward before Europe and I think we fall back after Europe. And so there would be that time where Europe thinks it's one time and the US thinks it's another time. Um, and that just would cause chaos. Like even within, you know, they think uh, two o'clock, two o'clock on Wednesday has always been this universal time. This week it's not, uh, depending on where you are. Um, and then in the spring, it's an even further distance between the dates. And so we had to skip two weeks across all the clubs. Um, and we really should add actually a week because as we looked at maybe two weeks, because you know we looked at it and we saw that uh, in the Southern hemisphere, uh, there are places that fall back a week after the spring forward. And so there's continued chaos around that. And so we probably will end up adding that for the fall, I need to look into what the difference is there. Um, so in general, a, a way to deal with recurring meetings is consider just not having them in the time in between when people are working out what the, the, the difference is. Another way to deal with that, if you don't have a whole bunch of different meetings to coordinate, is just you know make sure everyone is on board with, okay, this week it's 1 p.m. Uh, America uh, Central Time or, and, Central Time, or I like to use the more specific America Chicago, which is uh, the time zone as it's logged in R. Uh, that's Central Time that has daily savings time worked in or baked into it. And you don't have to worry about whether it's observed or not. So America Chicago, consider that. So just let, make sure everyone knows exactly what time you're thinking in. Um, also, be aware that after the switches. Um, if you're working with people in different countries or different states, it you might need to reset because maybe that time no longer works for some places where the time didn't change or changed by a different amount. Or, uh, you know, if you have northern and hemisphere or northern and southern hemisphere um, attendees, it can change by two hours uh, because one springs forward and the other one falls back. Um, so just be ready that you might have to reset that recurring meeting to a different time, and then just. As I was saying, always include the time zone when you're sharing a time. There's this timeanddate.com uh, website. They have a time zone converter. You can put a time and date in there. At, you know, you choose a time zone that you're setting it in, and then you can just add other time zones, and it shows you what is that time and date in that time zone. Now, technically, theoretically, everyone can make that conversion. They might be used to making that conversion, but especially in that period when there's a switch, they might not realize, oh, it's different on uh, March 16th than it would be on March 27th. Um, and so using that website, I find, uh, seems to reduce the confusion quite a bit. All right, so the next category is historical data. And this one, like, I can think of uh, lots of vague examples of it, but I didn't have one in my mind of a, a like hard, solid, this is a case of where uh, the historical data is confusing based on time zone information. And then I prepared this week's Tidy Tuesday. So Tidy Tuesday is a project that uh, we at the R for Data Science online learning community have put on since uh, April 2018. Every week we post a new data set, um, relatively clean data set on uh, various social media. And then people make data visualizations, models, whatever else they might wanna do with that data and use it to practice um, R or sometimes Python or whatever else they might be working in. Um, this week was about tornadoes in the United States stretching back to 1950. Um, I actually, uh, I'll go into a little bit about why stretching back to 1950 makes me pause for a sec a little bit because I don't think I got the cleaning quite perfectly correct here. Uh, but if you're trying to correlate historical events, um, exact timing might be important. Like if you wanna know, was this tornado on this at this time, the same as this tornado at this other time, or you know, the same is that time the same time? 
in these two different places. Um, you might want to be uh, might want to correlate stock prices or who knows what else, some other events, and you need to know what time is this actually. So I was putting this data set together, and fortunately, I got to just filter out. There were some times that were uh, the TZ field uh, was zero, and from the documentation, it was unclear whether that meant um, that the time that you know the time had already been converted to the normalized time zone, but they lost track of what the time zone had been, or that they just didn't know. And so, fortunately, there were only like six or seven rows. I just dropped those. Uh, but depending on what you're doing, those might be very important. Those might be when the anomalies happened. And so uh, it's, you know, it's, a, it's sad <laughs> if you have to lose those rows, but I didn't, I couldn't tell uh, what time the thing actually occurred, even though it had a time listed there. There were also actually, um, so almost all of the times were converted to central time or uh, it wasn't clear why, um, other than maybe that's where the person doing the conversions was based. Um, I guess actually, most tornadoes do happen in central time, so that's probably why. Um, but there were some that were indicated as, so central time was time zone three, uh, Greenwich was time zone nine, and then there was a time zone six, and I thought, oh, well, that must be somewhere between uh, central time and Greenwich. So, you know, clearly it must be east of central time, but all of the times, or all of the tornadoes that happened in time zone six, we're in states that are on mountain time. So for some reason, time zone six meant mountain time. Um, all that is to say that dealing with historical data, you really want to find a way to, to understand, wait, but when, when does this mean? Um, some tips for dealing with historical data that I wish they had uh, used in this data set is record everything in UTC. And you know, before I, I hedged it a little bit, but for anything that you want to be looking back at, have at least one column that is the date and time in UTC. Because it can change. Um, any time zone other than UTC can change. So the US implemented time zones in uh, 1883. It's actually November 18th, 1883 at noon New York time is when uh, they set the universal US time zones um, in theory, but that was 1883 and it wasn't until 1967 that time, the time zones were actually adopted uh, officially everywhere in the US. Uh, before that, there were some places that would just use uh, noon, you know, like when the sun is highest at that place, that's noon and they would define everything else based on that. So uh, it's important to know, like what time did you mean by that? Or it can be important to know. Uh, just as an aside, Italy adopted standard time based on GMT in 1893. Uh, before that, uh, you were 49 minutes and 56 seconds ahead of GMT. And then as far as I can find using the clock package in R, it, it at um, 2340, and 55 seconds on October 31st, 1893. The next second after that was midnight on November 1st. And so you skipped forward uh, 10 minutes and four seconds. Um, all of those, you know, that, that just shows why recording UTC, if you, absolutely, if you can at all, because who knows what will happen in the future and how the times might be confusing if that you think it's in Rome time, but Rome time has changed. Uh, different points in the past. Uh, the the daylight savings rules change from time to time, both daylight savings and uh, you know European summertime. They they change what the rules are, but if it's in UTC, it's always UTC. And I run into this sometimes where um, people in England will say, well, "Why do you just dis distinguish between UTC and GMT? They're the same thing." And so, no, GMT has changed at various points in the past, but UTC has a formal definition and it is always, uh, at, at least since it has existed and you can use um, the rules to even go back before it existed to set it to an exact time versus GMT sometimes has um, included, you know, summertime has been baked into the GMT time zone and sometimes it's not. And I, I think there've been different places that called things GMT that were might've been off by 
uh, minutes, things like that. So no, use UTC, it's always the same. Um, one caveat on all of that is you wanna be sure to convert back. If you're looking at anything like, you know, things that happen on Tuesdays and you're trying to do an analysis of does, does the day of the week impact this, uh, this model? Uh, be sure to use the local time for that when it makes sense. And just in general, because of all these things that I've been talking about, you might need to check that place and time. What did time mean uh, uh, at that time? So, you know, remember Lebanon 2023, whenever you're working with times, if you know the location, um, it's it could be important to find out, okay, but but what what was the time then? If it's especially if it's not given in UTC. All right, so to wrap things up, just to review, uh, there are these three categories, due dates, recurring meetings, and historical data. Due dates, you want to save everything normalized, give it in a distance and check in. Uh, for meetings, consider skipping when different places are going through changes and might be out of sync. Um, you might need to reset things and always include the time zone when you're sharing a time, um, just kind of in general. Historical data, record everything you can in UTC, normalize everything to UTC, but always check for the rules that applied in that place and time. Uh, you can find me, or first, you can join the RPDS online learning community at rpds.io slash join. Um, we are very friendly. That's our Slack. If you try to join and it doesn't work, please email rpdatasci at gmail.com or contact me on social media. That is supposed to be a forever link from Slack that it will always allow you to join, but that forever link expires sometimes just randomly. It, I think it's the number of times it's been used. Um, and so I'm actually setting something up to automatically refresh that. But until I get that set up, if it says you can't join, it's not me saying you can't join, it's Slack saying, oh no, this forever link is uh, no longer forever. So sorry about that. That happens from time to time. Uh, separate from that, if you, you know, if you need to talk to me about anything with R4DS, r4datasci at gmail.com. Otherwise, I'm John the Geek pretty much everywhere on LinkedIn, on uh, Mastodon, I'm on the Fostodon server, and on Twitter, I'm still there. Um, and if you do join, add me on LinkedIn, just please mention this meeting so I know who you are and um, how I know you, because uh, I like to stick with people I at least kind of know. Um, all right, and that is that is my talk. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. So very interesting, always very inspiring and informative. So yeah, that's great. So I don't know if anyone would like to jump in and ask questions to John directly. Just tell me because I, uh, yeah, okay. Give me a sec because I, um, yeah. Uh, I just have a question to stress John out a little. Have you thought about <laughs> with uh, leap seconds at all? Oh God, or, leaps! Uh, I actually, they could yeah, I was going to include that. Standard. So, so uh, leap seconds, if you don't know, are um, occasionally added by um, whichever standard body is in charge of that. Uh, I can't remember who it is, but to um, standardize. The actual like speed of the rotation of the Earth changes sometimes. Um, massive earthquakes can uh, does it speed us up because it's like we're dragging or pulling our arms in like an ice skater, and so the world spins a little bit too fast for a little bit after a big earthquake sometimes. Um, and so then they just kind of randomly add a leap second, and uh, every once in a while you might see like a whole bunch of websites stop working and you can't figure out why. And it's because there was a leap second and people weren't ready for it. Um, I think people are better at it now, but yeah, leap seconds. Um, <laughs> like watch for those. Um, it definitely can cause problems. Like sometimes there's a, a an hour that has, uh, or a minute that has 60 seconds in it. Uh, or sorry, it has a, you know, colon 60. Um, instead of going to zero at that point. And so just watch for those. Um, mostly 
for most things, they won't impact you. I did think about including that in the slides, but I decided it was a little bit beyond what I wanted to do. But yeah, leap seconds are a thing and they're evil. They're more random. I think there's been some, like, I think Google now um, has their own. They like they they do their own catch up and they ignore the universal leap seconds, which is extra fun. So they just say like they have a certain day every year that if there are leap seconds, they will add them. Otherwise, because the the standard can be almost any day, I think, can have a leap second. You just have to kind of watch for it. So yeah. Uh, so yes, you did stress me out. <laughs> and yes, um, right. A lot of companies do, uh, sorry, in the chat, Gus mentioned that they, instead of adding one second at one moment in time, they add fractions of a second throughout the day. And it's less noticeable uh, in a lot of things, but it also still can cause things to be out of sync and insanity to happen. Um, it's also one that actually, if your GPS stops working, it could be because of a leap second, because those rely on things knowing exactly what you know, what moment in time it is. And if different things have implemented leap seconds differently, uh, it won't work. So yeah, it's a good, that was a good evil question, Gus. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, and uh, there, there is Gabby. Um, one more question from Gabby, yeah. Hello. <laughs> You're unmuted, Gabby, but I can't hear you. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> I unmute her. Okay. Oops. Are you okay with uh, with the microphone? Oh, she can make it okay. Okay, I think you can unmute. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, good. I was using my uh, headphones. Anyway, um, I hope it's not too loud here. I'm at the student union having lunch. Yeah. Anyway, um, I have so many questions here, but <laughs> the I will just ask one because obviously you don't have, you know, we don't have like four hours here. Um, so I deal with spatial temporal data for work, I mean, this big project and we're dealing with, with this all the time. I mean, that's part of my work. Um, my question is, I don't know if Lubridate, the package, is gonna get deprecated or I don't know what the name for that is, if it's gonna get decommissioned or whatever. And I'm scared of that happening because <laughs> obviously I use TC equals whatever to deal with all of this. What's don't, your... I what do you think is going to happen with that? I think that they're going to update it to use. So, uh, you know, Lubridate is the tidyverse package for dealing with dates and times. And uh, one of the tidyverse team members wrote the package clock for like more precisely dealing with dates and times. Um, last I knew, the plan is to use clock as a new backend for Lubridate to make Lubridate work better. But it won't, uh, they don't, they have no plans to deprecate Lubridate or to supersede it or to change, you know, like it'll keep working. It'll just be like clock is where they will probably eventually sort out as much as they can the Lebanon stuff. Lubridate it is relying on and implement those times. And actually, I think it just uses whatever time zone file you happen to have on your machine. Um, Clock uses the TZDB, which is an online database um, that's mostly uh, standardized. It can still have the uh, confusion depending on when you have updated your TZDB. And that's the whole idea is that Clock, when the package updates, it updates TZDB, and then you've got like real time data. Um, so all of that is to say, just keep working with Lubridate and you should be fine, is my understanding. Uh, just behind the scenes, they're going to make it even better. Yeah, I can see if there's any other questions, maybe uh, someone else would like to uh, ask questions to John. Okay. I don't see. 
Um, okay, I, I like to. Um, uh, so I don't personally <laughs> uh, deal with this uh, with this those things yet, or I don't know if I do in the future. <coughs> But uh, I think it sometimes it's very challenging, even if for, for me within the, um, I, I'm in Italy, I'm in Rome, and I, I uh, usually spend a lot of time with America. And so I need, to, I have some, some uh, interesting things that happen at night. <laughs> so, um, and sometimes uh, when, when the, there's this, uh, Mm, daylight changing uh, and might happen that might happen that I set the meeting before the uh, yeah and so yeah. the time of the meeting before the the, the daylight changes so <laughs> it happened to me a couple of times <laughs> but obviously you know if uh, that that is something that would be automated uh, in in the future I think just so we're going forward uh, and uh, another thing I wanted to mention, even it's Africa. Africa yes. Yeah, I I believe that Africa has a quite wide range of. I don't know. I'm not I'm not, I'm not an expert on this field, but I was on a book club with Olafemi, and I yeah. noticed that he had twenty minutes different on uh, from my time. Hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, I, so time. 20 minutes I, I was not aware of anywhere but uh i think i have taken a, a screenshot <laughs> yeah <laughs> it shows my time and his time so we had 20 minutes difference uh, aside of the whole hour yeah yeah so there are there are time zones that are uh 15 30 or 45 minutes different from uh utc um there's Newfoundland, uh, Iran, I think Nepal, and, and uh, Nepal is like 45 minutes, I think. India is, you know, 10 and a half hours, um, and Sri Lanka. And then Australia has just a surprising diversity of time zones for, uh, well, Australia and New Zealand. They have Lord Howe Island in Australia is... Uh, I, I didn't have a place to really mention it, but they do either spring forward or fall back. I think they spring forward by a half hour and then they fall back to the other time. And so for half of the year, they're on the same hour as the rest of the world. And then for the other half of the year or whatever portion of the year, they're off by a half hour. Um, it's a small island and I think it probably isn't that many people that it impacts, um, but like just why, <laughs> why do that to yourself? Um, so yeah, uh, their time zones are crazy. Uh, that's, you know, I didn't really go into it in the talk, but uh, the US, um, was it the Senate passed uh, abolishment of daily savings, but actually I saw that they actually passed a thing that allows states to abolish daily savings. And then it didn't pass in the Congress anyway, so it didn't happen. But if it had happened, I was like, oh good, it's gone. No, it would be state by state then. Um, so it's just, uh, it's interesting and I hope that we can get rid of them someday. Time zones are enough work. The changing of daily with daylight saving, uh, is even more, and it makes things very difficult when you're working with people worldwide. Okay, that and uh, um, so, something else that uh, just um, uh, jumped into my mind, into my head, is top of my head, uh, was uh, uh, the the time changing in the UK. So you have like, I, I don't know if Kadi has some personal experience to share because maybe so she's in Rome, but uh, she's actually not Italian, yeah. Yeah, so, so I noticed that there was there was a difference within Greenwich time, for example. So Greenwich has a, a different uh, switch to daylight differently to the rest of the country or something like that. Is that right? Well, no, there's Greenwich Mean Time and then there's British Summer Time. That's when there's the, the change, um, the, the light change. 
but no, no, the, I think the Greenwich Green time is still the, the main official yeah. sort of time um, that all the other clocks sort of go by. <laughs> In a lovely little yeah. place called Greenwich in London, and it's on the top of a hill, and it's very quaint, mm -hmm. and very small, and it's got one of the first clocks, and it's got sort of um, things on the tower, um, mm -hmm. like a monument on the tower that the the ships could see as they're sailing past. It's um, it's worth visiting if <laughs> if you're in London. It's a nice little place to visit. It's tiny, mm -hmm. tiny place. Um, but that's you'll see the 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 median line. You can sort of stand on yeah. on the median line as well, which is quite good fun. But yeah, it, it is officially still the the main starting point of the times. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I'm interested to see what if anything happens of if British summertime and uh, European summertime drift apart uh, with. Uh, you know, with the separation. So that'll be interesting to see if that becomes a third date that yeah, or there is, whatever, there, another date. There is a different, I think there is a few days difference of when the time changes. They don't sort of. I, oh, I actually, right. I, that is right. Right. Uh, they don't change on the same day. So yeah, you, and Europe, Europe is all. At a certain all, point, you're, they're in the same time. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. But I yeah. don't, don't ask me what it is because I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I can't remember. It didn't come up in my search, but I might have just missed the difference. But I know Europe changes at the same time. Like, you know, in the US, it's hour by hour. Whatever time zone you're in, you do it at 2 a.m. in that time zone. But in Europe, it is one time for all of Europe. Um, but then I think that uh, I think British summertime might be it's within a day or two of that, but it's not that same hour. Um, British, so, honestly yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then there were places like uh greenland uses that same date but um they're far enough far enough west that they don't do it i think i had that right that they don't do it at that same hour and so they're off a little bit um but you know they're a special case because they're technically i think part of north america but they they're europe you know they're <laughs> like part of denmark so it's so complicated yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, that well, thank was fascinating. You. Oh. Thank you for all that information. <laughs> uh, it was it was a lot of fun to put together. So thank you for having me. Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. So I don't know if any there's any other uh, things that we want to mention. We'd like to mention. Uh, otherwise, we leave John free because he's uh, actually running for, for another meeting very I am. shortly. Yeah, I'm presenting at a book club, actually. So uh, yeah. I need to make sure I'm ready for that. <laughs> All right. yeah, well, thank funny. you very much. Thank you. I will John. see everyone on the RPDS Slack, rpds.io slash join. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thanks. Goodbye, everybody. Bye, everyone.